Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive right now our fresh manna from heaven. Thank you, Father, right now that you put your thoughts into my mind, your words into my mouth. And Father, this word is alive and powerful. I thank you, Father, that it is spirit and it is life and that it nourishes us, it builds us up, it produces faith in us, it sets us free, and it grows us up in Him in all things. Father, I thank you right now that every person has a listening ear and a receptive heart in Jesus' name. And now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation, and Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. And now, let's acknowledge our reception of the word. Today, he opens my ears to hear as the learned. Today, Father, I thank you that you give me quick and perfect understanding of all things. And Father, I thank you as I hear the word and receive it and understand it in my heart that it grows up in me and produces a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God for his word. Praise God for his word. You know, Jesus said, and he was acknowledging what had been said to the children of Israel uh, as they were getting ready to go into the promised land man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of god this is our spiritual food and you cannot live a victorious life without it the word of god is spirit and it is life to us so the holy spirit has been ministering to us on the love of God in us through the Word of God and as we're taking that word and planting it in our heart and you know that's our confession is I am the love of God he is my father and I am his love child and his love is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost 1 Corinthians 13, let's acknowledge this together. Therefore, I endure long, and I am patient and kind. I am never envious, nor do I boil over with jealousy. I am never boastful or vainglorious. I am never arrogant, conceited, or inflated with pride. I am free from envy and jealousy i'm free from pride because the word says that he that is dead is freed from sin and i am dead in christ therefore i am free from envy from jealousy from pride and from every sin jesus was made to be sin for me and i have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And that's our bold confession. And so yesterday we were looking at the opposite of pride, which is the nature of God. Pride is Satan's nature and envy is Satan's nature. And so that's what came into Adam. He became uh, his nature became Satan's nature. But you know, on the cross, Jesus even said, as Moses lift up the serpent uh, in the wilderness, so would the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross. And he became actually Satan's nature for us so that we could be free from his nature. And the only way to receive that is to acknowledge it by faith that I am free from pride. I am 
free from envy and jealousy. I am free from every evil work of Satan. I am free from sin. Whatever sin that maybe has, um, that you've had to contend with, just acknowledge by the word of God that you are free forever from these sins. But now we are taking the divine nature of our Heavenly Father, and that is humbleness of mind, humility. And yesterday, the Holy Spirit gave us many scriptures on that, that we were to be clothed with humility. Humility is now our nature. So today we're going to look at lowly and meekness because, again, this is the opposite of pride. This is God's divine nature. And this now is the nature that belongs to us. In um, Psalms chapter 22, verse 26, he says, The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. In Psalms 37, verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I can receive that. Jesus actually uh, said this in, I believe it was the Sermon on the Mount, that the meek would inherit the earth. In Isaiah 61, this was the prophecy, and then Jesus said it, acknowledged it by faith in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. And then um, in... James 1 21 he tells us lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls so the word meek means quiet gentle submissive of course you know, we're submissive to the Lord, but he also tells wives to be submissive to their husbands. He tells employees to be submissive to the employer. And, you know, that means that when you're on the job, that you are giving the employer your time. You don't um, play on your phone. You don't do other things, you give the employer what you're being paid to do. So you are being submissive to the Lord, but also to those in authority over you. The opposite of meek is impatient, assertive, overbearing. Impatient, assertive, overbearing. So he tells us in um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, he's talking specifically to wives. I had to go to this scripture many, many times to plant this in my heart. He says, for wives not to um, give their attention to um, their hair. In other words, that they were not to let the outer man be the thing that they gave the most attention to, but to let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God of great value. So to give the most attention to what's going on in the heart. And then he goes on to say, which the holy women of old who trusted in God did. That, that because they trusted in the Lord, then they had 
that quiet and meek spirit. But you know, the interesting thing about that is that Sarah, she was the fairest of all the women. So what was going on in the heart came out into the outer man. And then um, in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, the fruit of the Spirit. Well, we now are born again. We have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. But not only that, but we are filled with the Spirit of God and baptized in the Holy Spirit if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So he said the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. This is God's love, God's joy, God's peace, God's long-suffering, God's gentleness, God's goodness, God's goodness, wow, God's faith, God's meekness, and God's self-control. This is who we are. So let's just acknowledge that right now. But the fruit of my spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. And you know, this is actually causes you to be strong. In the natural pe people think, well, if I, if I walk in love like this, people are going to just walk all over me. No, this is in the realm of the spirit. This is a spiritual force. Every one of these are the spiritual characteristics of God. Jesus said about himself, he said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Notice it was in heart, in his spirit man. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus was meek and lowly in heart but Jesus ruled and reigned everywhere he went. Meekness is not weakness. Love, walking in the love of God, is not weakness. It is actually a strength. It actually produces great things in your life. In 1 Peter 3, he says, um, specifically talking to husbands and wives, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called, that you should inherit a blessing. In Colossians chapter three, verse 12, he tells us, he said, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So he's telling us to put these things on. And Going back to Galatians chapter 5, he says, just a moment, did I quote that right? Gal yes, Galatians chapter 5, he said, the fruit of the Spirit, he said, against such there is no law. So how though do we allow, how do we receive these things and become what God is and become the nature of God. How do we do that? Because I am a how-to person. You cannot make yourself be meek. You cannot make yourself have the peace of God. You cannot. So how do we allow 
the new creation realities to become a reality in us? The answer is in Romans chapter 10. With our heart, we believe, and with our mouth, confession is made unto. But also in Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, he says that the communication of your faith may become effective by the acknowledging or the confessing of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. And you know, as I was uh, pondering this, Jesus himself said about himself, I am meek and lowly in heart. He was also confessing what the word said about him. And you know what? He was that. But as you confess what the word says about you, then you become that. And I know even as wives, even as husbands, you know, trying to be what we know we're supposed to be, it's such labor it's, it's, you can't do it. Paul says, by the works of the flesh is no man justified. But everything we do is by faith. So we just simply receive by faith that we are the love of God. We receive by faith that we are humble-minded. We receive by faith and acknowledge with our mouth so let's just acknowledge this again together and as you do mix faith with it oh and let me bring this out you know you may think you know i just don't have any self-control yes you do you have the very self-control of the lord that is one of the fruits of the spirit that's temperance and um so let's just acknowledge right now those good things that are in us in Christ Jesus as we speak it by faith then it becomes a reality in us father I thank you right now that I live the fruit of the Spirit that the fruit of the Spirit is who I am I thank you father right now that I am the love of God I thank you, Father, that I am love, I am joy, I am your peace, I am your long-suffering, I am your gentleness, I am your faith, I am your meekness, and yes, I am your self-control. I have self-control over my words, I have self-control over what I eat, I have self-control over my spending. I have self-control over uh, everything that I do. Father, I want to thank you that I have temperance, that I have self-control, and also that I have your patience, Lord, that I am patient and I am kind. I have your kindness. I am your kindness in Jesus' name. And as we acknowledge those good things that are in us in Christ Jesus, then praise God, praise God, these things manifest in us and they become flesh in us. So the next part of 1 Corinthians 13 says, in the Amplified, Love is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. I've confessed that many times over myself, that I am never rude or unmannerly, that I am always courteous, always um, thoughtful toward others, and I never act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in me, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. 
love always prefers the other person for it is not self-seeking love is not touchy fretful or resentful hmm maybe we need to pause there and pick up on this tomorrow but love is never touchy never fretful and it's never resentful and let's just talk about uh, a marriage love is never never touchy never fretful never resentful and you know i know today in today's society that people say hormones cause women to be touchy or fretful or resentful but you know we're the redeemed of the lord and so that shouldn't affect us because the fruit of the spirit in us the love of god in us causes us to be steady all of the time just like our father god so let's just acknowledge that right now um i am never rude unmannerly and i never act unbecomingly love god's love in me never insist on its own rights or its own ways for i am not self-seeking i am never touchy fretful or resentful and we will stop there for today this is so good to allow this word to become flesh in us and be transformed from the inside to the out remember all day jesus is lord thank god for this word and that we are growing up in him in all things in jesus name